G'day Saints fans and welcome to another edition of The Engine Room. This week we're joined by development coach Peter Searle and today we're going to look at a concept that many of you wouldn't have heard of but it's really important in today's modern football, particularly to team defences and causing turnovers. So we'll have Peter today to explain each scenario. Thank you Joey. What is cover receiver? Basically it's when you put a lot of pressure on the ball carrier so that the other teammates can actually cover off the next dangerous person or receivers. The benefit or the ultimate benefit is to cause a turnover. Considering that 40% of scores come from turnover, it is a crucial part of our game. Other benefits include getting a kick across the body, which makes it easier to defend, buying time for your defence to get set, or causing a stoppage. However, if it's not executed properly, it can actually speed up the ball movement of the opposition and give them better quality looks because they have their shoulders and chest out facing the targets. Let's have a look at four clips. Okay, in this first clip, okay, we have Farron putting a lot of pressure on the ball carrier. We're in a loop, we've got a pretty good look here with Jack Nunes on the inside shoulder here, and we've got Blakey Akers, who's done one of the most important things of cover receiver, and that is scan, turn his head, and recognise that he's going to have to reference off and cover this opponent. As that has occurred, what's happened is, uh, the Hawthorne player, I think it was Siri Rioli here, he's become irrelevant. That's enabled Faz to give a handover to Jack Nunes. And we've got Snyder up here. He's the next person that's going to have to come forward to cover off this receiver, which will then allow Farron to come across because he's handed his opponent over. And we've also got Jack squeezing or putting chase down pressure up in the forward line there. So you can see the Saints are really squeezing all avenues. And there we go, we get the ultimate goal, a turnover, and we get a really good look inside 50. Okay, this is an example of cover receiver that's not executed well. Right now, if you look at this clip, you'll see that we've actually got a pretty healthy look. We're pretty balanced here, we've covered off, we've covered off, we've covered off. We've even got Tom who's uh, referencing off to his, his opponent here. And up on the screen up here, you can see Jack, he's in a pretty good position on his player. However, if you watch the clip unfold, Jack makes a decision to leave his opponent, create a 2v1 and has no impact. So one of the things that we don't want to happen is to, to have a 2v1 because it leaves us exposed on the outside and they get a really good look running towards goals with their shoulders out with no pressure. Okay, in this clip you've really got to admire the team for what they want to do in terms of hunt the ball carrier. However, you've got to do so smartly. As you can see here, we've got 5v2 and we are really exposed on the outside. So if they get it out on the outside, that's pretty well much good luck to the defenders because those GWS players are probably off to the races. And finally, we're going to finish on a positive from the weekend. As you can see, we're closing down on all possible exits. They're trusting that the job's going to be done on the first one and that enables them to cover off and persevere till we get what we want, which is a turnover. So there you have it, a really well detailed explanation of what we call cover the receiver. And while when you're watching it either at the ground or on TV, it may look like chaos, it's actually organised and structured chaos, where the idea is to reference off a man, trust the tackler to make the, the tackle, and we can cause turnovers. Hope you learned something new in this week's edition of The Engine Room.